What up, though, YouTube family? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Joe, and this is the Black Male Progressive Channel. Quickly, before we get started, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and if you'd like to donate, don't be afraid to hit the cash app. Well, Brianna, affirmative action is, of course, in front of the Supreme Court this term. Students for Fair Admissions, a group that would like to end race-based admissions practices in higher education, has filed a lawsuit against Harvard University. And SCOTUS has already heard oral arguments in that case. I'd like to start by saying that I don't think black people care too much. Um, we got our own schools, they call HBCU. Um, they believe that they are adjacent to whiteness, and they not. And I think they are about to get a real education about American society very soon. Now, a recent report in the New York Times, which cites information in the lawsuit and then also interviews with Asian applicants and college advisors for elite universities, reaches a startling conclusion that I wanted to discuss on the show and should, I think, provoke considerable alarm about the racism wrought by Harvard's policies. Okay, so here's the part that pisses off my white progressive friends. It's the fact that Asian American students make up 22% 20, 20, of Harvard's incoming class. Um, Asian Americans only make up about 5% of America's population. So it sounds a little ridiculous when Asian people scream someone's being racist towards them when they are getting 22% of the total admissions. Like it doesn't really, that argument doesn't really make sense to any Americans. Um, even conservatives think it's kind of goofy. Uh, to be honest, you know, let, let, let's, let's be honest. We have our own of these schools. That conclusion is that Asian teenagers are taught, implicitly and explicitly, to appear less Asian on their applications. This is from the New York Times piece, quote, in interviews, college admissions consultants spoke about trying to steer their Asian American clients away from so-called typically Asian activities, such as Chinese language school, piano, and Indian classical instruments like the venue flute. Now, this is something that um, pisses off conservatives, right? Because that's an oxymoron. How can you both claim to be the most assimilated immigrant group and yet at the same time someone needs to tell you hey maybe it's not a good idea to take Chinese language arts and you're trying to appear as Americanized as possible like that doesn't make sense and it actually makes conservatives feel like you're not really Americans and that at some point, uh, your group is gonna do something that is directly adversarial to the best interests of the American people. And that's just how they feel. And the way y'all moving, you can't really, uh, can't really be mad at them for feeling that way, regardless of whether or not that's a true statement. It just is what it is. They had other tips too. Writing about your family's immigrant hardship stories is too basic and don't bother checking the race box on the common application. Unless you're Latino or black, doing so may not hurt your chances of getting in, won't help you either. One college admissions counselor said, it doesn't make me happy to tell ninth graders that there are musical instruments they shouldn't play or academic pursuits they shouldn't engage in because it's going to make them look bad. Duh, dumbass. What? Who told you that America was this ethnic racial utopia where everything was even and everything was fair, where um, you would never get pushback? Um, you can't go immigrate to a different society and behave like colonizers and not expect pushback. It's the same thing that happened in Uganda. Um, the Asian community there immigrated to Uganda and, be and began to behave like colonizers and not citizens. And 
fairly quickly, the Ugandan people kicked them out of their country. All of them. I'm not saying that's going to happen here in the United States. Um, which, honestly, is probably the more humane choice. Joining us now to discuss all of this is Kenny Zhu, author of An Inconvenient Minority. Thanks for joining us, Kenny. Thanks for having me. So I saw a conversation. I read this New York Times piece. Uh, it was just pretty, I, I think, alarming uh, for general audiences to learn um, what specifically Asian um, young people, applicants to elite universities, the kind of self uh, self censoring, self it's beyond that. Ch you know, choosing their what their activities are, what they're interested in, really d dis almost disguising themselves in order to fool admissions counselors that that I, I think you would argue are you know are, are looking to weed out people that they think for some reason are are too similar, something of that nature. Okay, so here's Robbie Saw trying to tiptoe around the fact that these elite institutions don't want the only minorities in the schools to be Asians because it doesn't make sense. And it might really, really piss off everybody. And most importantly, all of this is going to affect America's military really, really severely. Um, so, answer this question and I, I might do a poll I might do a poll can you claim to be an American when your family doesn't have any veterans and your behavior is directly affecting America's ability to defend itself what's going on here yeah, well, let's be clear. You can't fool Harvard admissions officers because they have consulting companies that will take a look at every part of your background, whether you like it or not. They will evaluate you on your race, whether you like it or not. You can put you can put the no race box. You can even put white, but they will look you up. They will find you. They will because they're obsessed with this. It sounds to me like he's upset that uh, Harvard refuses to allow him and other Asian students to claim that they're white, which is ridiculous because you're not. And I think that is a lot of the issue. Um, I feel like there are certain Asian immigrants who really, really, really want to be white folks, but they don't understand that them trying to force whiteness upon themselves is going to create an extremely violent reaction from the actual white people and, and this is this this is the reality of harvard admissions in, in 19 in the 1970s the supreme court allowed schools like harvard to use race admissions and then reaffirmed it in 2003 in Bruder versus bollinger and the result of this is a culture at harvard where race is the goal um, when race is allowed race becomes the goal that's just what happens. They say it's holistic admissions, but every part of their system, a de Department of Justice investigation against Yale, for example, found race as a plus factor used four times in the admissions process. I agree with him. He is absolutely correct. It is all about race because that's the way white people in America made it. And Asian people who just got here aren't going to change that. I'm sorry, you're not going to change the racial hierarchy of America. You're not going to change the racial hierarchy of America. You're not. And trying to do it the way you're doing it is silly and dangerous. Um, yeah. Just wait till they have to reinstate the draft because black people stop going into the military because West Point can't get any black cadets and black families refuse to send their children to die in wars with the army that has no black leadership wait for that from the first committee to the final committee uh, uh on evaluation they will use race as a plus factor they will give you a plus factor if you are happen to be african-american and a minus factor if you happen to be asian yeah you're a he's absolutely correct absolutely correct and that's for a reason um, black people get a carve out in America's institutions 
because black people help create America's institutions. Like black people have been involved in the development of America at every level and in every step, in every war, in every conflict, in every construction project, in everything major that has happened in this country since before America was America has been um, uh, deeply influenced by black people and black people's contribution to this country. Um, so when you say something like, oh, black people get a car road. Well, yeah, we've earned it. Um, now, if you feel like we shouldn't get that carve out, that's fine. We have our own higher education institutions, whatever. But just understand that what you're doing isn't just going to affect black people who have everything we need as far as education and a collegiate aspect. Like y'all still gonna have to deal with all the other um, non-white Americans. Yeah, in my book, An Inconvenient Minority, I talk about Harvard's geographic diversity justification. So basically, Harvard comes up with this idea, which they might implement after the Supreme Court um, uh, uh, admonishes them in court on this race-based admissions. But they might implement this geographic diversity policy, which says, well, we want fewer kids from San Francisco. So once again, guys, uh, we come back to this this point. Um, look. I'm just be honest with you. America's consultant class is never, ever going to allow the American descendants of slaves to be displaced. Not in our institutions. It's not. It's not going to happen. These people have fought too long and too hard for that to happen. Like you can go to whatever court. You can go to whatever judiciary hearings. You can go to whatever Senate hearings. You can go to the office of the president of the United States of America. And it's not going to make a difference. <clears throat> Mainly because these elite institutions, Harvard, Yale, Stanford, all of those institutions have endowments. Harvard specifically has a 50 billion with a B, 50 billion billion dollar endowment like they don't even need the government's money harvard could run indefinitely just with its endowments because if harvard fights back hard and says fuck it we just gonna fund our own selves and our in our own classes and our own everything then I can guarantee that America's consultant class is gonna dig super deep in their pockets. And they are going to make damn sure that Harvard and Harvard Law stay in existence long after everyone forgets about these court cases. Like, duh. So, yeah, um, you can try, but I don't think you're gonna be very successful in the end and fewer kids from New York City. Uh, and we wanna get into the geographic diversity part, which is of course a proxy for race. Um, they, This is exactly what New York City did uh, under Mayor Bill de Blasio to get rid of Asians in the specialized high schools, which are the elite uh, public high schools in New York City. They said, we're gonna target people by zip code and we're gonna allow a certain number of people from each zip code. And then the zip codes that, that they happened to discriminate against happened to be the majority Asian zip codes. But I'm sorry, wouldn't that also cause them to discriminate against all of the diverse people who tend to live in cities, including Latinos and African-Americans? The, the, the zip codes that you point to, places like New York, concentrated areas in the country are notably more diverse. And when you look at maps of America, this is something that happens every election cycle. There are large swaths of the country that are much whiter and their political consequences for that are obviously much redder, precisely because there's such a lack of geographical diversity outside of the cities. I feel for Brianna. She's a graduate of Harvard Law. 
And I can tell that she has a lot more opinions. Yeah, it's not going to uh, be racial perfect. diversity, rather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, um, there's a reason why Harvard is defending the explicitly race-based part of their admission system. Because they want a more perfect um, admission system according to their race-based ideology. They have a, you know, a racial goal of getting a certain number of blacks and a certain number of Hispanics in school. The geographical diversity would make it harder for them to do that, but rest assured, they still have that goal. Well, Kenny, let me ask you this.